Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create wavy lines and rickrack in Photoshop. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to do. I'm going to show you how you can create all four of these lines. We're going to start off with this rather plain line to set up our dialogues. Then we're going to create this line and this one. And then finally, we're going to create this one. And you could use these as ribbons in scrapbooking projects or anywhere where you need a wavy line effect in Photoshop. To get started, we'll create a brand new document. I'll choose File and then New. I'm creating a document that is 1200 by 600 pixels and it has a white background. I'll just click OK. Now we're going to create the first of our stripes. I'm going to select the Rectangular Marquee tool and just drag out a long, thin rectangle. Now I want to fill it with the foreground colour, so I'll press Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac, and then I'll deselect my selection. Now in this case, I'm placing my shape directly on the background layer because it's going to make it a little bit easier for you to see exactly what's happening. With the background layer targeted, we'll choose Filter, and then Distort, and then Wave. The reason why I put the blue line directly on top of the white background is that otherwise, if it were on a transparent background, then you would be seeing the transparency squares here. It's a little bit difficult to see exactly what your line is going to look like. So when you're starting out and trying to find the right settings to use, then actually embedding your line inside a solid background will make it a lot easier to do so. In this dialog, what you're trying for here is a wavy line that looks pretty much like the one we've got here. So my number of generators is set to 1. Right now, my wavelength is set as a minimum to 24 and a maximum to 25. If we increase this, you'll see that the waves are stretched further apart. So we want quite a small wavelength. And setting the wavelength minimum to just 1 below the maximum is a really good setting. With amplitude, let's see what happens when we increase that. Well, it makes the loops much higher, and so we want a fairly low amplitude for our line. Here I've got the minimum set to 1, the maximum to 25. And then you can set a scale for horizontal and vertical. Now that's not really having a lot of effect here. Well, the vertical is having an effect, but the horizontal is not. So I've just set both of these to 100 and I'm really just looking in this dialog here to see if I'm getting the result that I want. You can also increase the number of generators but one seems to be a pretty good setting. I'm just going to decrease my wavelength just a little bit and I think I'm pretty good here. I have repeat edge pixel selected and of course what we're doing is a sine wave so we've got type sine. I'll just click OK. And there is a great wavy line. It's just awesome. It's worked out perfectly the first time. Now, if you don't want these sort of sucked in ends, then we can solve that problem using the marquee tool. I'm going to select over the very end. And because white is my background color here, pressing Control Backspace, Command Delete on the Mac will just fill that with white. I'm going to do the same on the other end. And press Control or Command D. So there's our first wavy line. I'm going to add a new layer to the document. I'm going to fill it with white. That's Control Backspace on the PC, Command Delete on the Mac. And now I'm going to add a new layer to the document. Well, I got a bit enthusiastic there. Let's just have one new layer. Now we're going to do a wave, but it's going to be multiple lines worth of waves. Well, we're going to start with the line tool. So I'm just going to click on the line tool here. I have pixels selected, so it's going to be filled pixels. Just going to draw out a really narrow line. And I'm going to hold the shift key as I do this so it goes perfectly horizontal. So now this is on a layer all by itself. So we're going to target this layer and again go and apply that exact same filter to it. Filter, Distort, Wave. This time you'll see that you can't really see the line because A, the line is very thin and we've got this checkerboard pattern behind it. But the line was pretty good last time we drew it and we haven't made any changes to the settings and our old settings are still here. So we can feel fairly confident by just selecting OK that we're going to get what we want. And we do. Here's our line. Now we're going to duplicate it. So I have the Move tool selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select Layer, New, Layer via Copy. So that makes a duplicate of that layer. And now I'm going to choose Edit, 
free transform. I've got two of these line shapes on top of each other, so I'm just going to start pressing the down arrow key. And I'm going to press it until these two lines are separated the amount that I want to see them separated. And when I'm finished, I'll click the check mark here. Now I could go and do that all over again three or four times, but that's an easier way of doing it. If I hold Control, Alt, Shift, and press the letter T, that's Command, Option, Shift, T on the Mac, look what happens. The lines are automatically created for me. They're duplicated and they're moved. Now I've just added two extra and I think that's sufficient. Let's have a look in our layers palette. We've got four layers here and what we want to do now is to blend them all together. So I'm selecting all four layers and I'll press Control or Command E to merge them together. So now we have these lines on a layer all by themselves. If you want thinner lines in your rickrack, you would just start off with a smaller or thinner line to begin with and then you wouldn't have to move them so much and you could put more lines in to get an equally thick piece of rickrack. Now I'm going to duplicate this shape because I want to show you something in addition to what we've just seen here. So I'm making a duplicate and I'm just going to turn one of these off so that we're just working with one copy of this shape. And we're going down here to the FX or the Add Layer Style icon and I'm going to choose Stroke. So in this case what we're doing is we're adding a stroke to our shape. I'm going to make it just one pixel in size. And at the moment it's set to outside and let's just change its color because it's going to be easier to see when we change its color. So it's green. And you can see that now it has a sort of filled in look. We can set it to inside and it has a slightly different look. And we can set it to center and it has a different look again. So you can combine colors in your rickrack by just using a stroke. And you can also change the blend mode. Right now mine's set to multiply, but you can set it to normal. Or you can use any of the other blend modes here. So you can make your ribbon look more filled in by using the stroke feature here. What's happening is that this sort of green stroke, this one pixel stroke, is just being applied to the outside of this blue line. Now while we're here, we can also add a drop shadow and that can give the shape a little bit of additional dimension. I'll just lighten it a little bit and click OK. So there's another one of our wavy line options. Let's turn all of this off and let's start on another one. So I'm going to add a brand new layer. Let's start this time with a different color. I'm going to select a pink. I'm going to create a pattern. So I'm going to start with a very, very thin rectangle. Extremely thin rectangle. I'm going to press Alt Backspace Option Delete on the Mac to fill that rectangle with my color. Now I'm going to zoom in so I can see everything very clearly. And I'm going to select, I'm going to select over this shape. I'm going to take three pink pixels and two white ones or two clear ones. So with that selected, I'm going to choose Edit, Define Pattern, and click OK. And now I'm going to just remove this entirely. So I'm going to select over this entire piece and just press Delete. Let's zoom back out because we've already created our pattern. Now let's go ahead and we'll again get the Rectangular Marquee Tool. And again, I'm going to draw out a long, thin rectangle. I'm going to fill it this time with a very light pink. Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac. I'm going to deselect my selection and then I'm going to click on this layer and again apply my filter to it. Filter, Distort, Wave. I'm happy with the waves that I've been drawing so far so I'm just going to click OK because these are really good settings. Now instead of just settling for the pink line that I've got, I'm going to duplicate this layer because I'm going to put a pattern filled version on top of the filled pink version. So I'm going to control or command click on the layer to select the topmost version. And I'm going to choose Edit Fill. And from the contents drop down the list, I'm going to select Pattern. And I'm going to go and select the pattern that I created earlier, this one here, and click OK. And you can see that the pattern has now been applied to the line. I can press Control or Command D to deselect the selection. 
Now if it's too dark a pattern, I can just alter down the opacity, just reduce the opacity of those dark lines so that we see a little bit more of the lighter pink underneath. When I get a result that I like, I'm going to blend these two layers together by pressing Control or Command E. And now I'll go and add just a very small drop shadow. So the drop shadow has been applied to the line, but if I wanted an edge to it, so if I wanted it to look a bit like ribbon, then I could go ahead and add a stroke to it. So let's just see how we do that. I'm going back to my stroke, and this time I'm going to pick up a pink, a little bit darker than the ribbon, but still in the pink area. And I've got just a one pixel line, and I can put it on the outside, so that's just added to the outside of that ribbon, and then just click OK. So let's have a look and say what it is that we've created now. We started out by creating this sort of basic wavy line. Then we created a single wavy line and then copied and transformed it to create this one. Then we duplicated that and added a stroke to it, which gave us this more filled in line. And finally, we created just a regular pink wavy line, just like this one at the bottom, but we filled a duplicate of it with a pattern that we created, blended it together, and then added a stroke and a drop shadow. So there are some wavy line options and some rickrack ribbon options that you can create in Photoshop. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.